Shalom, welcome to Through the Eyes of the Elder Discussion Series. We're glad you could join us today. Today, we're going to start on and embark on a new project, which is a taking a look at the book of Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians, many people read it a particular way, and they develop a narrative about that. But I think you're going to find that as we go through this six-part series, or at least that's what we're hoping to do it in six parts, we're going to take try to take one book at a time, and we're going to go through and dissect it. And I think what you're going to find as we go through this process, you're going to find out that the book of Ephesians is a little bit more different than probably what you've been taught in the past. And we're hoping that this is going to open your eyes up to a whole new dimension of the book of Ephesians. So we're not going to get into the history of this, but we're going to try and break it down um, in the way that we've seen it. This project has been going on now for almost a year and a half, and I felt like Yahweh has said, now is the time to actually begin to do this series. I think world events and things that's going on, societal upheavals, it's, it's poignant that we start this process now. So this is what we're going to do. Um, the title of this is Walking as an End Time Malchizedian Priest. And that might be a surprise to some of you, but again, as we go through this series, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see the legal arguments that we're going to make that in order to make it through this period of time that we're coming into, you're going to have to walk in the full power and knowledge of Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach. Some of you may know him as Jesus. And so we're now in a time where a war is brewing. If you look at the religious and the social uh, aspects of society today around the world. You're seeing more and more polarization, more and more intention, be one nation against another. We have now Israel is in war with bombing Iran. Um, and so we've got all these things that are going on. And so there's an awful lot of contention that's going on around the world. I want to take you back in history to BC 153 or thereabouts. Um, Israel, or I should say Jerusalem, was in a battle as well. And what was going on there is you had the Essene priests who were operating in the temple as the priests who were the righteous ones. And then you had some of those from Judah who wound up developing Talmudic Judaism were in contention with those priests. And what happened is eventually they ran those Essene priests out. They had to go down to the Qumran and live out their lives there in their own particular community because they weren't welcome back at the temple anymore. Unfortunately, because of what Judah had done, um, the Greeks came down, and I'm not going to belabor that whole history, but the Greeks came down and they wound up taking over Jerusalem. Sure, the Maccabeans uh, revolted and they took it back over, but then the sad conclusion of that was that they had come back within two years later and they had 100,000 men who wound up capturing Judas Maccabeus and his priest, and they tortured them in the streets of Jerusalem. And the sad ending to that story is they took back over the temple again. So it's not a, unfortunately, Hanukkah is not a day to celebrate in the way it's celebrated today, because it wasn't a victory, it was a loss. And this is what happens, unfortunately, when you try to replace the ones who are appointed to run the temple. And this was the conclusion of that. But that's another story and another video for another time. But the Essenes did live out their days, whatever it was, uh, in that period of time. And they wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, as many people know. But what I want to get into now in the, this period of time, they had their war back then. We have a war that is brewing now. And what is happening is we have the sons of disobedience that are beginning to rise up in these end times. And as I was thinking about this, I came to the conclusion that the reason why Satan has the sons of disobedience coming up at this particular, this particular period of time is because Satan knows that the sons of Elohim are about to be revealed. We know the scripture where it says the earth moans and groans and waits for the revealing of the sons of Elohim. I believe that these sons of Elohim are the end-time Melchizedian priesthood. And these people are going to be walking in the full power and authority of Yahweh on the earth during the time of the tribulation. And that's what's going to be leading people into righteousness. And so I believe that in this book of Ephesians, what Paul is basically talking about 
he's explaining who we are, what we are, what we can be. And then we have to have the fulfillment of that. Well, there are requirements, legal requirements, in order to fulfill the role of a Melchizedian priest. A lot of people like to throw up in the air and throw around this idea that you have to put on the full armor of God. And that's fine and good, but I think we're going to find that as we go through this series, you're going to see that it's not so easy, and there's only certain groups of people that are going to be able to fall into that category. And what I am hoping is that as we go through this, you'll be able to look at yourself and determine, if you're honest with yourself, and we try to be, uh, that we fall short of this. And there are reasons why we fall short of this, and we're going to explore that. So I want to thank my brother Anthony, who's with me again today, to explore this series in the book of Ephesians. And is our hope, as I had said, that this might open the eyes of more people as they start to look at what we're going to unveil in this book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And so I want to kind of turn the floor over to you, uh, to give your input on what your thought is about this before we get started. Well, praise Yahweh. Um, as always, it's a blessing to um, just glean from the thoughts that passes through our minds and the revelations that's being revealed in certain ways. So I'm just like a sponge. I'm just absorbing because for me, I like to pretty much try to see things through the eyes of other people also and try to like bring it together, bring the pieces together as Yahweh is trying to do with each and every one of us. He's trying to fit all of us into the building, into one house. Um, for me, I'm always personal. I'm always in a personal examination when I'm doing anything that's involving instructions, uh, uh, teachings and everything. And I'm, I'm seeing where I fit at within that particular teaching, if it applies to me or if it doesn't apply to me. But I have to examine myself to see, am I on the right path as Yahweh is trying to reveal to us in these days? But how can you do it when you don't even know who you are? You know, and so we first have to discover our identity in the Messiah. And we can only do that is through his witnesses, through his teachers. You know, um, you use the word priests. You know, the priests were servants. Their job was just to serve him. Our job today is just to serve Yahweh continually, serve him and serve his people. And that's that's a, a really a contradiction to what we see in leaders today. The leaders are seeking to be the one to be served. And so everything is flowing up and nothing is flowing down. And so I'm, I'm just excited to every time that he allows us to sit down, it's just to see his work and how he's drawing us and how he's moving us into a place and into position to glorify him and to worship him. So I'm just going to sit back and we're going to see where this thing takes us. Baruch Hashem. Well said. Um, yeah, I, along with what you're saying, and then we're going to get into this, is I find for me personally, I, I, I'm assuming for you as well, and anybody out there who's listening, who's going through the same process, I think as you begin to listen to the Ruach, the Spirit, and as it begins to unveil little by little who and what you are or mm -hmm. what you're supposed to be, you should be coming to a place where you're becoming, I don't want to say scared or afraid, but sort of, yes, because when you start to realize what a daunting task it is you've been commissioned with as you come into that deeper understanding of who and what you're supposed to be, um, it should frighten you a bit because the end result is if you've been called to be something and you refuse to honor that calling, well, then, you know, you're going to be bumped out of the picture and somebody else is going to take your place. Yes. We're all expendable. 
And I know that flies in the face of what some might think, but uh, you can go on thinking that way. But in the end, <laughs> I hope I'm wrong, but I don't believe that the scriptures indicates that I'm wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a few verses at a time, mm -hmm. and then we're going to have a summary um, explanation of what's being said so that we can follow it little by little as we go along so it unveils. So in verse 1 in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, Paul, an apostle, which is an ambassador of the gospel with miraculous powers of Yahshua HaMashiach by the will of Elohim to the saints that are morally blameless, who are in Ephesus and faithful in Hamashiach Yahshua. Verse 2, grace, the divine influence on the heart to be grateful to you and peace with rest and prosperity from Elohim our Father and Yahweh Yahshua Hamashiach. Blessed be the Elohim the and Father of our Yahweh Yahshua Hamashiach, who has blessed us with every spiritual of a supernatural blessing in heavenly places in Hamashiach. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So my synopsis of what Paul is talking about is he's confirming to the Ephesians who and what we are. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, it's we as human beings, we need to constantly be reaffirming and finding out who and what we really are. Because the devil's so much at work every day to try to take away that identity. And so it's not hard to lose it as time goes on if you don't stay connected to the Spirit and connected to His Word. And, um, you know, uh, you get beaten down all the time. And when you get beaten down all the time, pretty soon the idea is that you don't have the power to overcome that. Mm -hmm. And then you forget and you lose who that identity is. So he starts off in this letter by saying the positive aspects of how he sees Yahweh sees them. And so he wants to recommit that to them so that they can understand what he's going to say as he goes through this whole letter. Mm -hmm. So um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, uh, what uh, comes to me right off the top is Yes, he has a title. He has instructions, but he's establishing the first and greatest commandment, Yahweh, to love Yahweh. It's because of Yahweh's love, and that's why we love him. So I, I got to let you know, no matter what my title is, it's one higher than him. And that's the one that has blessed me with these spiritual gifts. That's the one that has sent the compassion and the love towards you that you can understand who it is that he's creating us to be. And that's to be a worshiper and a praiser of Yahweh through Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay. So, I, you know, I meant to say something earlier and I, it slipped my mind, but it's come back as I'm listening to you. And, you know, in the Torah, Yahweh says to Israel, all 12 tribes, mm -hmm. he says, I have made you to be kings and priests. Mm -hmm. Now, that term made to be uh, basically means that is the end result of what I, I've determined. But as we know that there's only one tribe that's the priest and only one tribe that is uh, the kingly line. Mm -hmm. And that's Judah. But what about the other 10 tribes? So he included them as being kings and priests. So clearly he's not talking about that Aaronic system or the kingly system that existed that day. What he's really referring to is a Malchizedian structure mm -hmm. because he's doing this through Israel so that the nations come in. And so when you, when you look at the heavenly Jerusalem, for example, and you see you've got 12 tribes of Israel, the 144,000 who represent the 12 tribes of Israel, all represent the four walls of the kingdom and the gates that you have to pass through. Well, we know that in the, in the scriptures that when the temple was constructed, you had the outer court for the Gentiles, the inner court for Israel. So a Gentile could not come through the, the court uh, uh, through the gate of Israel to come into the inner court if they weren't circumcised. Well, this is the same as true in the heavenly Jerusalem. 
Israel is the gates and the walls of that city. And no Gentile is going to be able to come through there if he refuses to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Israel is the gate. Mm -hmm. And yet today, we got a lot of people trying to say Israel is no more. The church has replaced it. Yeah. But it's not a commandment-keeping church, so they don't qualify to be the walls of the temple. Okay? So there's a structure, there's a protocol to this that that the apostle Paul is operating from. And so what he's saying to this church is this is what you're supposed to be. And we're going to go through this and we're going to keep going through and keep driving the point home and our hope is that people will be able to understand what's going on here and um let it open their eyes to a whole nother level. So first off um uh, what Shaul is talking about, he classifies them as being morally blameless. Mm -hmm. And so in Luke 1, 6, it says, and they were both righteous, which is equity of character and morality before Elohim, walking in the commandments as an authoritative prescription of Torah and ordinances in righteous decisions of Yahweh, blameless as irreproachable. Okay. Now today... We got people that feel, who don't believe you need to keep the commandments, that they can approach you and tell you that you're under the law and you don't need to be doing that. We don't do it. We got Jesus. We got his blood. That's all you need. You know, the, the typical cliche statements that are made. But he's saying here that they were irreproachable. From Yahweh's perspective, because they kept the commandments and the ordinances, they were irreproachable. In other words, you can say whatever you want in the flesh of your heart mm -hmm. against somebody. Right. But the real test is, when Yahweh looks at that person, does he see them the same way that you're judging them? Mm -hmm. So you've got to be very careful about how you judge other people. So um, that first statement right there. Paul's basically telling them, you're like these people, okay? You're irreproachable, you keep the commandments, and you have the authoritative prescription from the Torah to do so, and that makes you irreproachable. Nobody's going to be able to take that away from you, okay, as far as on the human level. Your 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 thoughts on that? It, it's, it's, it's still, uh, I'm going to hammer in and the, the, the mission. Uh, we did a, a a video a while back called Who's Your Teacher? Even from Moses, he sent Moses with the instructions, but it was the same instructions for everybody. Speak to the children of Israel. Yeshua didn't change that when he came. He sent his disciples out to teach whatsoever I commanded you. It's the same thing. And he didn't tell them to stop teaching Moses. Mm -hmm. You know, he just gave an example. If, Like you said, he made Israel kings and priests. They still had to go out and serve the nations. They were made to be that light. And so we're, we're, we're seeking, uh, as Abraham was, a country. But that country builder and maker has to be Yahweh. He don't make two different types of countries. It's one country, one faith. But it's so hard and difficult for all of us to get in because we fall short of the instructions, even as parents in Israel coming up. We were taught that when you lie down, when you rise up, when you walk by the way, teach it to your children, teach your children to teach it to their children. It was the same word, the same lifestyle, but we are falling short today because the terrors of the enemy has gotten in and begin to, to sow seeds of doubt that I'm not convinced I'm one with you. You believe that and I believe this, but we got the same father. And some people have a very compelling argument. Yeah. But it's based on the wrong foundation. It's based on a, you believing that your father is not a partial father. Mm -hmm. Right. All the more reason why you have to have the full armor of Yahweh. Yes. And boy, it's going to be really interesting when we get into those aspects uh, of exactly. it. Exactly. So the second... Uh, point that Shaul is making in these first four voices, uh, verses, I'm sorry, um, 
he, they have had grace imparted to them. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this is an interesting one because I find that most people really don't understand the word grace. Mm -hmm. They just mean like, you're forgiven, you can't do any wrong anymore, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and that don't cut it. That's not what the word grace means. But let's go mm -hmm. ahead and read in Romans 1 verse 5. It says, through him we have received grace, the mm -hmm. divine influence on the heart to be grateful. To be thankful. The divine influence mm -hmm. upon the heart to be grateful. Mm -hmm. Okay? And apostleship, one who is set apart for a commission for obedience to the faith that is a moral conviction of Torah. Mm -hmm. Okay, among all nations for his name that has character, character and authority. So this idea of divine influence upon the heart, I'm sure even those that don't subscribe to keeping all the commandments. Let's take the last six, which is the ones that Christians tend to observe. The only reason why you would not steal is if you used to steal. Let's just take somebody that used to steal. Mm -hmm. The only reason why you don't steal anymore and you don't believe in it is because of the divine influence upon the heart that you became grateful enough what was spoken to your heart about that law mm -hmm. through the Spirit, mm -hmm. because you didn't have that nature before that now, okay, that now you become abhorrent to the idea of stealing anything in this world. And you're so against it, you won't do it anymore. You can't take credit for that. The, Yahweh gets the credit for that. Because it's through the power of his spirit, as it says in Jeremiah, that he will write his laws on your heart. And so that's why you don't steal anymore, just to keep it to the last six. Mm -hmm. Well, if he can do that to the last six, why can't he do that for the first four? Right. And I think that's something that people out there need to examine in their heart in sincerity and truth. Why am I so hostile against the first four commandments, okay? Which is the minimum requirement with the 10 to be able to be grafted into the natural tree of all of Israel, okay? So that you can receive that nourishing sap and be a part of them as a commonwealth. But you can't really, that's like if you a person from another country wants to come in this country and be a citizen. But they say, they take the test and they say, well, I agree to do in this part of the Constitution, but these other parts of the Constitution I don't agree with. They're going to send you back to your country. Yes. So what makes you think that you can't get away with that, but you think you could get away with this idea of not keeping all Ten Commandments? The point here is it's that Yahweh can only speak to somebody who truly has an open mind and doesn't have hostility against his spirit that's trying to show him you're missing out. You're missing out. The greatest commandment is to worship me. You do that through the first four commandments. Yes. Yes. And so I'm not condemning Christians. I'm just simply saying that through your own process of how you've been indoctrinated, you're missing out. And We'll get into it later into the book of Revelation about what happens to those Gentiles who maintain that position. And it's going to be an interesting look into that when we get to it. I want to get into that right now. Yeah. Uh, you got anything you it, want to it, say about this? Yeah, it's not a, a fact of condemning. It's a fact of a question. Mm -hmm. Examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith mm -hmm. or not. Uh, uh it always has been the deception from the beginning, even before the commandments. The deception was already there. So through the deception, sin entered in. But it entered in through the perception that you can have just as much more authority than Yahweh. So now you can make up your own way there of what's go. right go and Hashem. what's wrong. Yep. It's yep. the yep. same concept that's going on today because mm -hmm. the enemy comes in and think you got more 
authority or just as much authority as the giver of authority. But Yahweh has established his authority already that he is the greatest. He is the greatest. So he is the first and greatest commandment is mm -hmm. him. Right. And he created us and he sent the son into the world because he loved us so much. So why is this love being reciprocated back from us? We have to seriously examine ourselves and question ourselves. Am I loving him enough? To believe his words and to obey his words. I don't think any of us are. I'm not claiming mm. I do. Yeah, but I, I have my I, own forms of resistance. Yeah. But it takes time to grow into that. Yeah, exactly. It it's takes, just like marriage. Uh -huh. You know, you get first married to your wife, you know, but it takes years and years and decades even, at least with me. I'm a slow learner when it comes to that, you know, but it takes time to learn your wife and understand what makes her tick. And you, men tend to resist against a lot of that. But over a period of time, you start saying, you know, there's dimensions about this that I'm not getting. And when you finally do get it, you're like, how stupid could I be that I didn't understand that earlier? Yeah, that's the foundation mm -hmm. that he's laid is right. love. And our picture of love is a growing to love. His is I love you in spite so I sent my son in here to show my love for you, and he showed you how much he loved me to suffer for you. Love is sacrificing ourself for the sake of somebody else. Right. Whether we whether they, they don't have to be completely right in order for me to love you. And so we're in a time today, I love you if you do this. I love you if you do that. And you got to know I love you, especially to our wives, because I buy you this and I take you here and I, yeah. that's love. Yeah. But that, is it really love? Yeah. You know, don't tell and that so, to my wife. <laughs> so our perspective is the example that Yeshua yeah. came down in the flesh to show us in the flesh that it's possible that we don't look at the flesh to look for perfection. We look at the inner man. And what's inside that man, it comes out to show the imperfections or the perfections that's being uh, nourished and growing up and matured inside of you. What defines a man? You know, something hit me with what you said. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it triggered something. Mm -hmm. So in my experience, if I've been going through something and then Yahweh comes in, Yahshua comes in, and fixes it, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And now that that stress is gone and the problem is solved, he doesn't he doesn't come to at least not with me. Maybe he does you and other people, but he doesn't come to me and say, "See there, do you see how much I really love you? That I just with one breath just move this thing out of the way in your life." You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't come and rub it in. Right. In other words. Right. And and so. What you said, I, what triggered me was, oh, see, I did this for you, you know, as mm -hmm. if like you need you want to get some brownie points. Right. You know, right. I do the same thing. But in really, in reality, you shouldn't have to really say that, because if you did something for the wife, she knows what you did. Right. You know, if she wants to pat you on the head for being nice and doing it, that's great. But if not, you should just take it in stride. And that's what you're supposed to do from the heart, from the heart. I'm not looking mm -hmm. for necessarily anything in return. You and know? that's what the priesthood was all about. What they were doing mm -hmm. was sacrifices from their heart, but they first had to sacrifice for themselves before they can come and make a sacrifice for you. Mm -hmm. and, and so the sacrifice we make for ourselves is we lay our, our needs apart so that we can fulfill yours. And that's because we love you. That's from the mm -hmm. heart. And we show you that as an example. And if you appreciate it, and I'm, and I'm saying us as followers of the Messiah, if we appreciate the sacrifice he made, then we should be willing to re-specificate that um, sacrifice back toward him. And that's the key because I think oftentimes we don't. Yes. It's like we gratified in that moment. But then it's sort of like you kind of forgot already what happened to you. And this is just the, the book of Ephesians is just the re-establishing the foundation 
Huh? That he's bringing us into him to be one with him. But if we're not sacrificing the sacrifices that he's sacrificing, the oneness is not there yet. Not mm-hmm. saying it's not obtainable because all things are possible through him, but it's something on our behalf that we have to be willing to go through in order to show our gratefulness. And, and that that right there, that mindset, I think what Shaul is, is getting across as we go through this is once you understand this concept, it should compel you mm-hmm. to get to that. And when it does, you've now reached a level where you can put on the full armor of Yahweh, yes. truly speaking, yes. you know? Yes. Um, so in John 1, 17, it says, For the law was given through Moses, mm-hmm. but grace, the divine influence of the heart, to be grateful and truth of Torah came through Yahshua HaMashiach. Mm-hmm. So how could the truth of Torah come through Yahshua HaMashiach, and yet we're not supposed to keep it? Right. <laughs> You know, it's just oxymoronic. (laughs) But, you know, the thing is, when you look at it from a certain theology, the way, say, Christians have been looking at it, it's not hard to understand how you arrive at that conclusion. Mm -hmm. It sounds very appetizing, but but it's based on a wrong philosophy. Um, The third point is that he's getting across is are blessed with every spiritual gift which is needed for this priesthood. Mm -hmm. You need these gifts to be prepared for this priesthood because these sons of disobedience are rising up now and the fire is getting hotter and hotter and Satan knows that the sons of Elohim are about to be revealed. That's why he's raising up this generation of disobedience to oppose you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have these spiritual gifts and armament that Yahweh wants to give to you, you're not going to be able to fend this off. Right. And sadly, I see a lot of people that don't know how to hold their ground scripturally Mm -hmm. at all, much less be able to put on the full armor of Yahweh. So in Romans 7, 14, it says, for we know that the law of Moses is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is divinely supernatural, but I am carnal soft with frailties, Mm -hmm. sold, reduplicated to be trafficked as merchandise into slavery under sin. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So if we're merchandise of sin, which I can, I can testify to that Mm -hmm. because the pulls on the flesh every day are absolutely horrendous and they're getting worse at least for me as I'm getting older, is getting harder and harder, harder to bear. Um, but we we got to strive to get against that to make it over to the other side. There has, there has to be a war. You can't win an external war if you can't win the internal war. Mm-hmm. And that's what we got to we got to realize. We got this war in our members in our body mm-hmm. that's fighting against itself, against the spirit mm-hmm. of Yahweh, mm-hmm. and it's going along with the spirit of Hasatan. Mm-hmm. And so we we've got to win this inner battle mm-hmm. that will propel us into this area of the spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. He's not just gonna you don't give your three year old child. Uh, the keys to the car to go drive the car. Mm -hmm. He's not qualified to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got to grow into that little by little. Mm -hmm. Uh, You got something you want to say about it? It it was a lot of stuff that's coming through my mind, and I don't want to just get all the way off into it, but it's I just want to establish the foundation of love. I want to keep hammering that, that it's been laid. And this is just one of the letters that Paul wrote to each um, letter that he wrote to the Corinthians. It was dealing with all different kind of battles that they were dealing with at that particular time. So we in Ephesus and they don't realize these are Gentiles and they don't even realize that they are one with the Messiah, that they are fellow citizens and fellow heirs of the same spirit. Mm -hmm. And so today they are taught, oh, that's for the Jews and this for the Christians. It's so far from what's being taught in the examples, but it don't um, surprise me because it's the same spirit from the beginning. That's how sin entered into the world and, and it's been used to as 
to traffic us as we merchandise of that same thing that our first Adam did. But the second Adam came to free us and show us that, hey, my father said man should not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from his mouth. Right. And we got to really believe that these are his words. This, he's, we can't replace it with another word. It, we have to believe that these were witnesses and these were leaders that were chosen to come and bring us these instructions. And if we're reading the same thing, John, how are we hearing different instructions? You're listening to a different spirit. Exactly. Well, you know, if you take the five books of Torah, it's basically a one long continuous love letter mm -hmm. between Yahweh, the one that spoke to Israel, mm -hmm. okay, which is Yahshua or Jesus, right. right? And that was the marriage contract. Mm -hmm. He read her the marriage contract. And so today we want to do away with the marriage contract. And it's saying here that it was spoken the one spoken through Moses is also spoken through Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. He came here in the flesh to read you the marriage contract that he read to Israel, mm -hmm. even for the Gentiles as a mm -hmm. testimony. Mm -hmm. And the first early Gentiles, they kept the marriage contract. They came on the Sabbath week after week to hear the, the law of Moses. Yes, they did. And today they don't want to do that. Uh -uh. And, and, and John, just think about it. All in what they call the New Testament, where everything was did away with, we just coming out of the seventh month, almost out of the right. seventh month, mm -hmm. right? Which is the feces. Mm -hmm. And Paul is all in here, Peter and all of them, telling you, even at Corinth, you know, he say, let's keep the feast. Not with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread yeah, of sincerity and, and truth. truth. Which is Torah. And, and yeah. again, he was, uh, I believe it was the time you, you did a message on the shipwreck. But he was trying to get to Jerusalem so he could be there by the day of Pentecost. Those are feasts, Shavuot. Those are feasts mm -hmm. that they were trying to be there and had to be there. Mm -hmm. That they are teaching in the New Testament, but we got teachers are being raised up today and they are using Yeshua's name to say that he told them they don't have to do it. Right. Well, these teachers that you say you are following that he was sent to you, the Gentiles, that's anybody that was not Israel was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. it, it has nothing to do with your geographical area. If you wasn't a part of them, then you were considered a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And the sin that entered in from the beginning is the same sin that worketh today. It's a lie. And it's a murderer. Because when you uh, break the commandments, you have murdered. When you teach somebody to break the commandments, you have become a murderer mm -hmm. and a liar. Right, right. And so we, we, we got to get back to the foundation and be raised up in the heavenly realm. The words that came from heaven, not the word that come here. But if you don't know him, how are you going to know what came from heaven? Right. Exactly. In 1 Corinthians 3.15, it says, But he who is spiritual mm -hmm. as non-carnal mm -hmm. judges through investigation all things. Mm -hmm. uh, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Mm -hmm. So that reaffirms what we were reading earlier, yes. that if you're justified in Yahweh's sight, People can come and tell you whatever they want. Right. As long as you know who you are right. and what he's told you, mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about the voices you're hearing from other people mm -hmm. or not following in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the fourth, fourth point that Shaul's trying to get across in those first four verses is only love as the foundation qualifies one to be without blame, mm -hmm. which goes to what you were saying. So in Psalms 119, 165, it says, Great peace, shalom, that is safety and prosperity, have those who love with affection your law of Torah and nothing that exists that causes them to stumble or and entice them to fall. Mm -hmm. And so, again, going back to that, that idea of the Christian who believes only in the sixth commandments of the one of not stealing. You can't 
nobody can come and accuse you of being a thief if in your heart that law was written there that you don't believe in stealing. Mm -hmm. They might be able to try to accuse you to authorities and so forth, but in the end, Yahweh will vindicate you as being innocent. Mm -hmm. So the same is true about not making idols. Uh, and that, we're not going to go into all the explanations, but not bowing down to worship them, mm -hmm. not taking Yahweh's name in vain, which means you refuse to use it. Mm -hmm. If you don't use his name, it's in vain. His name is in vain because when you invoke his name, you invoke blessings, okay? Because you're prospering his name to the nations mm -hmm. who don't use his name. He wants his name to be called upon, okay? Um, the Sabbath day on the, on, on, on the seventh day of the week. Mm -hmm. These are things that the devil can use against you because if you're in opposition to it, then you're guilty of that and you have sin in your life, which in some cases is willful, others it's ignorance because you've been indoctrinated by somebody that you don't need to keep these things and you haven't proven it to yourself. We just read about, you know, proving mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. okay? And so you're guilty, but it's through ignorance. That's yes. kind of a different category. I don't want to get into all that. So the bottom line is that when you keep the Torah, you have the full backing of Yahweh. You have the full backing of the priesthood. That means you have the full backing of the blessings, spiritual gifts, and the armor, the foundation of putting that armor on where the devil cannot destroy you and take you out of this thing. Mm-hmm. And people around you see that, even if they don't agree with you, they see that you are a witness that you will not compromise right. with anything. Right. You guys might get weak in the knees, but he don't get weak in the knees. They may not agree. They may not like it, but they will acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that a million times. Anyway, got something you want to say? Oh, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. okay. Yes. All right. So... We're going to start now in verse 5, and this is going to lead to a point of becoming sons of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Because really, if you think about it, the Malchizedian priest, the end-time Malchizedian priesthood, and the sons of Elohim, and the 144,000, they're pretty much all the same thing mm -hmm. in a general sense. I'm going to say it that way. And so this is where it's leading us to. So in verse 5, it says, having predestined to ordained in a limited amount in advance as a decree that was specified for us to adoption, to be sons of Elohim as sons by Yahshua Messiah to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted by giving special honor in the Beloved. In him, verse 7, we have redemption as a ransom paid for in full through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the richness of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom, not some, but all, mm -hmm. from a higher spiritual source and prudence of intellectual and moral insight. Having made known to us the mystery that is a silence imposed by initiation into religious rites of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed as to exhibit in himself. So what it's basically saying is everything that he demonstrated when he was here, mm -hmm. he demonstrated for us to witness so that we can be like him. You know, the scripture says, let this mind be in you that was in Messiah, Yahshua, HaMashiach, mm -hmm. Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the mind that we're talking about. So if you're not willing to put on that full mind that he has, then you are lacking. And if you're lacking, that means some parts of the armor that you need to have on your body, the devil can get in there and afflict you in that particular place because you're lacking that piece of armor. Mm -hmm. Because you refuse through stubbornness and through rebellion to look into these matters that we're talking about and become obedient to the point where you don't lack the armor. Yes. 
So this is the, this is what is becoming. We're becoming sons of Elohim. See, the earth moans and groans and waits for the revealing of the sons of Elohim. We're looking around right now. We see the earth is moaning and groaning, and it's basically saying, "When are these people going to be revealed? When are these twelve tribes of Israel, which are blood-born Israelites?" who, in my estimation, genetically, don't know what tribe they're from. But they have a calling that represents what we're reading here, mm -hmm. and they're operating in their life, or they're growing in this operation in their life, coming into, it's sort of like we talked about this the other night, it's sort of, uh, Sharon brought it up, it's sort of like being a fetus in the womb. Okay, mm -hmm. the fetus is growing, it's developing, it's growing through stages. The mother is nourishing it. Mm -hmm. And then there comes a day when the baby has to come out and it's born. And it's sort of that's how I see the sons of Elohim. The earth is contracting mm -hmm. and it's got all these things going on because it's saying, I want the sons of Elohim to manifest so we can put an end to all this craziness. Mm -hmm. And so you out there may feel like you're part of this, but you don't fully understand it or you don't know why it's taking so long to get where you want to get to and you're striving, but you seem to always fall short. It's okay. This is Yahshua's work in you. He started it from the beginning. He will bring it to an end. Mm -hmm. And you got to be patient and allow him to bring you along because it's not it's not based on what you can do. It's not based upon your capabilities. It's based on his capabilities of bringing you along when he wants to bring you along to the next level. Mm -hmm. All we got to do is say, thank you. Let me be open to it. It might be uncomfortable. It might be rough to go through, but let me not resist what I know I think the spirit is telling me, but my carnal mind is fighting against it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's my two bits on that. <laughs> <laughs> you were deep. I, I would say like this. Uh, one might ask, how do we become sons of Elohim? And I would simply say it's not going to be without uh, a fight. Right. But I can simply give you his words. And he said, to many as believed on him, he gave them power to become sons. And Amen. so we 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 listen. I, I um in, in my um riders life, my sons were identified by all the unrighteousness I would do. Yeah, you just like your daddy, you know. But now today. In my uh, forgiven state, or my uh, redemption state, they're not acknowledging the good that's coming through me as them being, yeah, you good, you 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 got that good spirit just like your daddy. They only want to uh, make you think that the wrong things that you do in life are the most popular. But that's not being a son. The disobedient things don't make you a son, but the obedient things mm -hmm. give you the power Amen. to become my Amen, son. That's my son yeah. right Amen. there. I'm so yeah. proud of you. Mm -hmm. Not because you um, are an actor, a famous actor, or a famous singer, but because you was obedient to me. Right. Huh? I didn't have these problems with you. You 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 resisted, you know. And the scriptures say you resist the devil, he'll flee. But we got to believe the scriptures and be willing to crucify. Let this flesh be crucified. Deny it. Exactly. And it'll come up on the subjection to the word of Yahweh. And, and I look back so many times and I just see no kind of way I could have made it through. But I'm standing here that I made it through a lot of stuff by the grace of Yahweh. So what I'm going to do is look back and say, oh, he 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 loved me so much. He, he shed his blood and that's it. I'm not going to say thank you. Mm -hmm. But how do I say thank you with my obedience? Right. Exactly. You know, um, on a side note. 
a lot of people like to say sons of Elohim in Genesis 6 mm -hmm. were fallen angels. But, you know, I, I did a three-part series on this. I brought out every scripture in all the Old and New Testament. You cannot find one place in scripture where the term sons of Elohim or children of Elohim mm -hmm. or offspring of Elohim, you know, they, there's different ways to say it. Mm -hmm. Not once is it ever refer to anybody that's disobedient, like you're saying. Right. Demons are disobedient. Mm -hmm. Sons of Elohim means that they're sons of Torah, sons of morality, sons of obedience. Demons are not obedient. So that whole idea is just a bunch of nonsense, and legally you cannot do it. for Now people are saying that the Nephilim made it through the flood somehow. Uh -huh. I think they had a raft or something that they were floating on, and, and, and that's how they got <laughs> they it. I'm not sure. <laughs> they didn't get wet. <laughs> it, but this is the craziness. Uh -huh. it, this is so simple to answer, but, but they don't want to come from a legal perspective. They want to come from a mythological perspective, mm -hmm. and that's not scripture. Um, so I found a scripture I thought kind of illustrates the point. What is the will of the Father? Mm -hmm. What is the will of the Father? The will of the Father is to keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. So if you want to please the Father, you first got to please the Son. Because mm -hmm. if you can't get through the Son, you're no, certainly not getting to right. the Father. Exactly. You know. So in Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter the kingdom that rules with royalty of heaven. Mm -hmm. But he who does by not transgressing the law as the will and purpose of my father in heaven. Mm -hmm. There you go. That explains exactly what the will of the father is. He's replicating children on the earth who are going to have the same heart and the same mind and the same spirit that he has, mm -hmm. which goes back to the love mm -hmm. because the fulfillment of the law is love. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. This is. This is powerful. Uh, and I hope that the hearers of this word really, really believe Yeshua when he say his words are spirit and they are life because it speaks something to you to tell you that something inside you is not right. It's killing you. And that's that spirit of disobedience that the enemy, I mean, um, they're going to be here. The, the scripture tells us that presenting themselves as ministers of righteousness. How are you going to know that if you don't believe that there's no, there's no unrighteousness? That's nothing you can do that's unrighteous. Your sins are totally covered. You've been sealed so he don't see nothing else that you do. How does that make sense? You know, um, I'm seeing a phenomenon lately and this should really scare people who are anti-Torah. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain in a minute. But I'm seeing more and more people that atheist, agnostic, mm -hmm. intellectual, liberal, even of different sexual pers per uh, persuasions that is going on now, who are all of a sudden starting to say, what I'm seeing in the world today, okay, in the secular realm, what I'm seeing, I can no longer as an atheist, an agnostic, a liberal, or whatever, I cannot explain what is going on with what I'm seeing in my eyes through my ideology. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I am confessing that what I'm seeing is an evil that cannot be explained through my, the way I have thought my whole life, mm -hmm. the way I've been trained to look at things. Mm -hmm. Even they are starting to wake up. And what I'm saying to the Christian is those of you who are resisting being grafted into Israel, who are resisting keeping the commandments, Yahweh, I'm telling you, is going to bump you out of the way, and he's going to take an atheist to replace you. Mm -hmm. 
who will keep his commandments. Because mm -hmm. one way or another, Yahweh is going to have his people on this earth as his representatives as this all falls apart. Mm -hmm. And if you won't get in line with that, you're going to be bumped out. Mm -hmm. I can be bumped out. Mm -hmm. I could be fine today and tomorrow I wake up on the wrong side of the bed. And I mean, I pray that don't ever happen. That scares the living daylights out of me, mm -hmm. but I could be bumped out. Yes. So this is a dangerous game. You only have so much time to come into compliance mm -hmm. because once the hour trial comes on the earth, everybody's going to be running for the hills. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be almost too late at that point because you had time to redeem the time, to get in alignment with his will, and you chose not to do that and hold on to your ideology. And now the hour trial is here, the beast is here, and now you got a decision to make. Yes. And if you side with him, you got three and a half years of life. Mm -hmm. If you side decide against him, you might die right away by getting your head cut off, but you'll have eternal life. Mm -hmm. This is not a game. I believe Yahweh is saying through these scriptures is this is not a game. We, even the atheists are looking and saying there has to be genuine evil, a spirit realm, because I can't explain this any other way. And it, That's it's, crazy. Yeah, but they got these teachers calling themselves prophets and apostles. They got all kind of titles on their name. And we're not testing the spirit to see if it's of Yahweh because we're not seeking the spirit of Yahweh. Right. We want him to tell us we got it. Mm -hmm. But we know within ourselves we don't got it. But if he tell me I got it, I don't can tell I can't mention you. I have the, all the funerals I went to and not one, not one that didn't make it into heaven already. Now, if that preacher, he preaching and this preacher preaching and they all preaching the same thing and they sending everybody to heaven, I, I, why should I worry? I, I know what a lot of these people was doing and I wasn't doing the half. So if my sin is, 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 is if their sin is forgiven, I know mine can get me in and I don't have to do nothing either. Never step foot in your church, but I went to heaven. Well, that's the old storyline from the garden yeah take the fruit you ain't gonna die you'll live forever you got you got to believe the word of yahweh yeah you all know. right next point um his will was to predestine us to a calling to be sons of elohim mm -hmm. so in first john 5 2 it says by this we know that we love the children sons of Elohim, mm -hmm. when we love Yahweh and keep and observe and perform his commandments as an authoritative prescription. Mm -hmm. It's telling you right here, this is what we're supposed to be. In the new covenant. Yeah. So <laughs> this group keeps the Torah mm -hmm. just like Yahshua mm -hmm. kept the Torah, and they're able to walk in the authority that he delegates to them because they've proven themselves to be obedient, like mm -hmm. you've been saying. Yes. That's the true test of the fulfillment of the law, which is love. You love to the point that you're going to be obedient. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to buck and fight and resist it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. when you get qualified. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure for every woman it's a little bit different, but I listen to a lot of women, um, and they're, they're, men like to talk a lot of garbage stuff mm -hmm. you know oh you know you're an ex you were an expert at that Not but <laughs> um in your day in those days but i think all men kind of are we but probably thought I, we but, were and, and they like to hear some things mm -hmm. but there's a difference between that and when a woman finally looks at the man and says i think i'm convinced he really loves me mm -hmm. you may not know exactly what you did mm -hmm. you know and they may or may not tell you. But in their mind, there's something that you did that finally convinced them he's for real. Mm -hmm. He's for real. He mm -hmm. proved it to me. Mm -hmm. And I think Yahshua is the same way, mm -hmm. the way you've been describing it. Mm -hmm. In 1 John 5, 2, by this we know that we love. I'm sorry, That's I already read that. Um, so the will of the Father is to keep his commandments, which is a moral nature. Mm-hmm. It's immoral to reject moral law. 
Mm -hmm. from Torah. Mm -hmm. You're practicing immorality. Mm -hmm. um, I already read that one. I don't know why I got that in there. You probably uh, needed to read it twice to hammer it on home. You think so? Yeah. So let me read it again. <laughs> the boss has spoken. <laughs> Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter the kingdom that rules with royalty of heaven, but he who does by not transgressing the law as the will and the purpose of my Father in heaven. He now, that say he knoweth me and keepeth not my commandment is uh, a liar. You got it, man. And the truth is not in him. You got He's it. He's stressing his commandments. Man. Obey him. I Obey wish we had all day to do this live. video. There's yeah. so many scriptures to pull out like that. That's so and, true. And... and we are trying, we are striving to be sons, but we're looking at the outer man to determine that. Let's start concentrating on the inward man, the heart. Let's allow his word to turn our stony heart into a heart of flesh. Let him write with his spirit on your heart that his love can be poured in, that his love, only thing coming out of your heart is his love. Our hearts are corrupt. Oh, yeah. That's what Jeremiah said. It's deceitful above all things that you can be deceitful in you in this world. Your heart is the most deceitful thing it is. Right. Um, that kind of ties in, and you got ahead of this, uh, but I didn't that's know. okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so one of the points that Paul is making in, in the, these verses is it is through his grace that we're accepted. Yes, which goes back to what you're saying mm -hmm. by showing unrestricted love. Mm -hmm. That's how you get accepted. Mm -hmm. It's not this. Oh, no, no, I'll do this, but I won't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, the scripture says that classifies him as a wicked and lazy servant. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be known as that, right. even though I know in my heart, sometimes that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yes. It's really hard. Yes. So in order to win the world out there, you got to win the world inside. Mm hmm. And so sometimes it's agonizing because you have to sit and wait for the spirit to give you the answer to what the problem is and give you the power to overcome it. You know, you know, you, you're talking and, and I'm reminded of uh, a statement that was made. Um, I believe it was through Moses. He said he declared the end in the beginning. And we're in the beginning of. Ephesians talking about becoming sons of uh, Elohim and walking in the uh, order of a Melchizedek priest. And at the, I can go right to the end from the beginning and just by the statement you just made and say we fight, fight not against flesh and blood. But uh, against principles and principalities and spiritual wickedness. And everything that you are putting here is being said, repeated again at the end of this book, which we are, of Yahweh's will, we'll get to it. We'll get to it, mm -hmm. yeah. So it is through his grace that the blood purchased mm -hmm. us as the for the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's another point he's trying to make. And another one is, because grace grew, we obtained a higher level of wisdom mm -hmm. that gave us a greater understanding of the mystery mm -hmm. of his will mm -hmm. that only those of the faith can attain. Mm -hmm. So what's he saying? What he's saying is, the more his spirit speaks to you, which is his grace, and the only way grace is activated is... It, if you're about to do something, let me give it this way. If you're about to do something and you hear the Spirit say to you, don't do that or don't do it now, right? And you heed that. That's grace mm -hmm. because grace may be given, but grace is not necessarily received. Right. So in other words, the Spirit could tell you not to do something. You go do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Guilty. I, I've done that a million times, mm -hmm. you know. On the other hand, if you hear the Spirit tell you not to do it, and you're like, and you pause, you go, well, I feel like the Spirit just told me not to do that. I don't have any understanding why. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know why. I'm convinced that the Spirit told me not to do it. I'm not going to do it. Right. In that moment, 
you've attained a higher level of wisdom. Because what is wisdom? Wisdom is applied knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's only those who've exercised that applied knowledge, which is Torah, the mm -hmm. commandments, mm -hmm. through obedience, that you see the end result of when somebody does it or you do it or if you don't do it. Mm -hmm. That, even if you don't do it and you suffer for it, you still gain wisdom because it allows you to be able to repent and not fall into that trap again. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so by doing so, Yahweh reveals more and more of the mystery of his will. Mm -hmm. In other words, he reveals more of his Torah to you, mm -hmm. more of his will. His Torah is his will. Mm -hmm. So as the scripture says, he who's faithful in little will be faithful in much. Yes. So if you're not going to go through this process, he's not going to give you any more because you don't want it. Yes. And that goes back to the love you're talking about, which is mm -hmm. the obedience. Mm -hmm. It all It's all circular. Yes. You know, it's yes. all circular. Yes. Okay. So the next phase that we're going to go through with this in mind is going to be setting up the government of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It says that we are ambassadors for the kingdom of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. We're here as representatives of his kingdom to not just let no, everybody know uh, the kingdom is coming, but that the kingdom is good, good news. Mm -hmm. What is the good news? The good news is that he's going to take the stony heart out of your, the, the stone out of your heart and give you a heart of flesh that now you don't have to strive for him to write his commandments on your heart. So you can freely love him when you couldn't do it before. Mm -hmm. And so that means that's open for everybody else, Gentiles, everybody else on this earth. There's a kingdom that is coming that's going to solve all these problems. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be a slave to sin anymore. Yes. That's the good news because slave news. sin has consequences. Mm -hmm. So let's read in verse 10. It says, that is in the dispensation of his administrative state of the fullness of that culminates in the completeness of the times he might gather together in all things in Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance with an assigned privilege being predestined to ordain in a limited amount in advance as a decree that was specified according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. And the will, again, mm -hmm. is that you should keep his commandments. commandments. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, that we who first trusted in Hamashiach should be to the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. In him you also trusted after you had heard the word of truth, which is Torah, the yes. commandments, mm -hmm. the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed. Mm -hmm. The sons of Elohim are sealed. Yes. The 144,000 are sealed. Mm -hmm. The Melchizedek priesthood is a sealed priesthood. Mm -hmm. It has exclusive access to the Father. Um that is private for the security and preserving of the Holy Spirit of promise, which is a divine promise of good, mm -hmm. who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So this is about the setting up of the kingdom of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And this is part of our mandate of what Paul's trying to get across of why we do this. We don't just do this for ourselves. We're doing this so that we can qualify to be able to be in the kingdom and be able, and, and show the people what the kingdom is here on the earth now mm -hmm. can be for you mm -hmm. so that you can enter in when that time comes, mm -hmm. you know, spiritually mm -hmm. enter in in the heavenly Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So any thoughts? No, go ahead. Oh, okay. So one of the points that Paul's trying to make when the fullness... Ah, just jumped on me. When the fullness of the time comes, everything that is in Messiah will be completed. Yes. I'm the Alpha, I'm yes. the Omega, the beginning and the end, the yes. first and the last. Mm -hmm. So this is all about his work. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's about the construction, constructing the heavenly temple of his people in heaven. Because mm -hmm. remember, 
This Malchizedian priesthood, the sons of Elohim, the 144,000, are the 12 tribes of Israel, which are the walls that surround the, the heavenly Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. If you want to get into that, that kingdom, you got to go through Israel to get in. Mm -hmm. You can't be a Gentile in mental state and expect to walk through that gate. Mm -hmm. Whether it's northeast, south, or west, they're going to stop you. You can't come in here. Mm -hmm. Remember uh, uh, the example of the wedding feast, uh, yes. the guy that snuck in, how did he get in here? Mm -hmm. He was thrown out. Mm -hmm. Didn't have you, you right don't thoughts. qualify to be in here. Mm -hmm. You're anti-Israel. Mm -hmm. You're not coming in here. Mm -hmm. You need to be circumcised if you want to come in here mm -hmm. in heart. Mm -hmm. You want to say something? No, go ahead. No, this, I thought you were rumbling something. It, it, uh -uh. I I'm, thought I I'm thought, saying Baruch Hashem, Hallelujah. Oh, okay, That's what I was I'm doing. <laughs> I thought something was percolating. Okay. <laughs> Okay, also Paul's trying to say they trusted the gospel of truth, which sealed them, which is the divine promise, mm -hmm. part of the divine promise. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the sealing of them means your name's fully written in the mm -hmm. Lamb's book of life. Yes. So when your name is called, when the resurrection is going to take place, you're coming up. It's all about the truth. Yeah, because we know in Hebrews it says, mm -hmm. all these died in the faith, having not received the promise of eternal life, mm -hmm. that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Mm -hmm. Nobody's in heaven right now. Mm -hmm. The first resurrection hasn't occurred. Mm -hmm. It's telling you, all these patriarchs in the Old Testament that everybody's preaching up in heaven, Paul's telling you there, they're still in their grave. They died mm -hmm. in the faith, mm -hmm. and they hadn't been made perfect apart from us. Mm -hmm. See, John, many, and I know they're doing it without knowing, they, the ark, the commandments are inside of the ark, but the mercy seat sits on the outside. They go there and they receive their mercy and they go back. They won't go any further. If you say you on the grace of you got his mercy, well, let's go to the next step and receive his instructions. Let's take it to the next step. Yeah, so that was that you starting can, point. Yeah, yeah, so that you can really learn how to become sons, you know, and daughters. You you got to really take it to the next step. Yeah, I, I receive your forgiveness. Now let me go further and see what I got to do to keep walking in that forgiveness. Okay. Um, Hebrews 11. I don't know why I got that there. Oh, Okay. So in Hebrews 11, at verse 39, it says, and all the, here it is, and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith, mm -hmm. the focus of moral conviction of the truth of Torah mm -hmm. that did not ever received the, the promise. promise, a pledge of divine assurance. Mm -hmm. Yahweh having provided, furnished in advance something better, mm -hmm. stronger for us. Now, mm -hmm. words all of us, including them, right. that they should not be made perfect as a complete finished work in spirit, apart and separately without us. Yes. Don't get any more clear than that. They're still in their graves. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for that which they looked off and saw in they the distance. Saw, and he told them, Yeshua say, Abraham saw me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So another point that Paul is um, getting across in the following verse is granted revelation and knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be granted revelation and knowledge. In verse 15, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in Yahweh, Yahshua, Mm -hmm. And your love for all the saints do not cease to give thanks for you, mention, making mention of you in my prayers, that the Elohim of your of our Yahshua, Yahweh Yahshua Hamashiach, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. So one of the points that he's making in there is their faith and love for all the saints. Mm -hmm. So this is a criteria. This has got to be one of them. Mm -hmm. And it's hard nowadays because I know a lot of people that have left the faith. Mm -hmm. So my communication with, uh, with people that believe like I did mm -hmm. or still do, they're gone. Mm -hmm. So it's increasingly harder to do this because the circle is getting smaller and smaller because the devil's taking people out of the game. Mm -hmm. People are losing sight of what is important, which is being spelled out here in this teaching. Mm -hmm. Um he reaffirms his prayers for them. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So in other words, he's taking the authority that he has and he's looking at their strengths and their weaknesses and he's making prayers and supplication for them mm -hmm. as a high priest over to people to grant the power that he has be bestowed upon them, mm -hmm. especially where they might be lacking, mm -hmm. whether collectively or some as individuals. Mm -hmm. Also, Shaul is saying he reaffirms that Yahweh should give them wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. So he had already kind of said this before, that it's it, it's it's at your beck and call, but there's things you got to do in order to be able to attain this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we've kind of gone through some of those steps already. Yes. He reaffirms that because of their enlightenment, they will know the hope of their calling and the glory of their inheritance. See, mm -hmm. now that's exactly why we're doing this series, mm -hmm. is to help people understand that the book of Ephesians is not what necessarily you've been taught in the past. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get you to understand that this is a Malchizedian priesthood. You're qualifying to operate at this highest peak level of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's going to get there. Mm -hmm. I may not get there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, even though I've been in this for 43 years, that doesn't mean I'm going to get in there. Mm -hmm. Somebody could just come to the faith tomorrow and the spirit could get so poured out on them that they know as much as I do that I've learned in 43 years and they learn it in a year. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is limitless what he can do, yes. especially when the time's getting crunched down. Mm -hmm. He's got to get this thing done. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the work he's doing. So, um, as you grow in this thing, as we've already said, you're going to get to know more and more of your hope. Your hope is going to increase mm -hmm. because you're going to see the reality of what Yahweh's revealing to you through his spirit of what you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. which is how we started this thing off. Mm -hmm. You got something you want to say? No, go ahead. St huh? Still nothing. Yeah. I would have thought by now that there was something in there that, uh, yeah. that was tickling you I in some it's way. it's all going to come together. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I don't believe in that. All right. So. Now, Yahshua affirms Yahweh's ability by his Melchizedian power. Mm -hmm. See, that's where the real power lies, is in that Melchizedian priesthood. Mm -hmm. Remember, Paul said that we are a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. Remember he says that in Hebrews? We're a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. And that is the Melchizedian. That is the highest level of priesthood you can possibly get to. Mm -hmm. So in verse 18, it says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of confidence of his calling. I can tell you that when I first got called, I had no inclination of anything like this. Mm -hmm. Nothing like this was being taught. I, it, it's only in recent years that I've come to this kind of understanding. And it's all, and it took a year and a half in the last year and a half for us to be able to sit down to do this mm -hmm. because I felt like Yahweh saying, we're now in the times where this has got to go out. Mm -hmm. um, what are the riches of valuable bestowment of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? I'm not going to get into the inheritance because that kind of, you know, that kind of also gets into, so once you get into the kingdom, um, he's going to divvy up the kingdoms of the earth, and he's going to give people different positions within his government to mm -hmm. rule over the nations mm -hmm. and your enemies and all that stuff. But that that's another story for another time. Uh, and what is the exceeding of which passes the basic mark of greatness? So we're not just talking about greatness. We're talking about exceedingly above greatness. Mm -hmm. How can you imagine that? If you haven't experienced that level, how can you experience, know what it is beyond that? Yeah, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's like many say today, you know, uh, I can't picture me being more than what I am. Right. Same I idea. can't picture me doing right. more than what I'm doing right now, but they don't see the power and his ability but to see, that's a good that point. you beyond that. That's a good point because that's how we started off mm -hmm. in verse one as we were going down. Paul probably had some sort of a sense that um, these Ephesians um, 
maybe didn't even understand the concept of who and what they were or mm -hmm. supposed to be. And he starts off by explaining to them, this is how Yahweh sees you. This is how I see you. You may not be there just yet, but this is how I see you. So it's reaffirmation, reaffirmation over and over again, mm -hmm. because the carnal mind's always fighting against it. How can I be something that I can't even understand what I'm supposed to be? I've and, never experienced it before. And when you're being taught, you're something different. It's just the basic teaching today, the Christians, the Jews. Right. But we won. Right. How you are the same body with a different name. Right. It's only one name. It's only one head on this body. Yeah. And we all get, wear that same name. So how can I be different? Yeah. And the Ephesians were living in a society where there was a major pagan goddess that ruled over that city. Mm -hmm. And um, as the multi-breasted, I forget the name. Uh, I won't even say it. I can't remember the name. D not important. But that was the ruling god, goddess over that city. And it was heavy government oppression. And the peoples were so angry with Shaul when he came there to teach that he literally had to flee for his life mm -hmm. out of there. Mm -hmm. So I can say I haven't gotten to the point yet where I've had to flee for my life, you know, mm -hmm. but that time's coming. That That's the whole point of this. Mm -hmm. You don't want to wait till it comes upon you to realize all these things. You need to start preparing now and be receptive to what the Ruach or the Spirit is trying to tell you. So let's go on here. Uh, mark of greatness of his power, which is miraculous towards us who believe, mm -hmm. according to the working of his mighty power, mm -hmm. which he worked in Hamashiach, Yahshua, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, which goes to what you're saying, mm -hmm. wicked spirits in high places, mm -hmm. which is the first estate and principal rule and power of privilege of superhuman capacity and might and dominion of governmental rulers, which are imperial cults, and every name that is named not only in the age in this age, but also in the one that is to come. Mm -hmm. And he put all things under in an inferior position of his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church or the called out ones, mm -hmm. which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? It's, it's, it's just a conf, it's just starting out beginning, nourishing us from babes. We're coming into something. This is foreign to a lot of people. Even I don't care if you're a Christian preacher, been preaching for 60 years. It's foreign because you don't know who you are. You're claiming to be something that don't even match up with Paul is describing. It's the Torah that describes you. It's your obedience to the Torah that defines who you are in Messiah because those are the ones that has the power to become the sons. Those are the ones, when you think about priests, those are the ones who are qualified to be the servants. Even his disciples ask, Who's, which one of us going to sit at your right hand? You understand? We want to serve you. I want to be right there serving you. How do, is that spirit in us? I want to be right there serving you. But it's going to call all of us up in that we're all called to praise him and be servants of him to go out. Go out into the world and give this same love that was given to us to those that are lost out there in the world. Uh, a, a lot of them are going to reject it, but it, it's not the fact that it wasn't offered. If we had control, if I had control over the sun and the air, I probably would cut it off just to get some people attention, but he don't even <laughs> cut it off. Yeah, right. That's love, whether you serving yeah. him or not. And yeah. when you get this forgiveness, when I got it, when I received this forgiveness, there's no way I, I saw past just saying, please forgive me and just teach me how to just live right, not become a son not become a priest, but just teach me how to live right. And in that, 
he not only did that, but he's teaching me that I'm more than what I even asked for. Yes, yeah, that's the faith, exceeding, the faith and glory to yeah, exceeding yeah. abundantly more than what I even asked for. Yeah, that's power. Okay. To see that. Yeah. So Yahshua affirms Yahweh's ability by his Melchizedek and power. Mm -hmm. uh, your eyes will perceive an understanding of your calling. Is another thing he's trying to get across. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's, he's basically saying, uh, you know, in essence, I, I could say that it looks to me like there's no end to what this is. Mm -hmm. In this life, no matter how high you get in this priesthood, Malchizedek priesthood, you're never going to come to a full understanding of what the capabilities are. Mm -hmm. it, it's limitless, it, even in this flesh. And, uh, but I don't think that's the point. The point is, are you starting on that path? Are you walking as a, like a Zadok, a righteous one, you know, and letting the commandments illuminate your path so you can see where you're walking and not stumble along the way? See, even him, uh, Yeshua, came as the high priest. He came to serve, not to be served. Right. But the way that we're teaching it, we picture some, and we attach that title to us, it puffs us up. And now I'm using this title to get you to serve me. Right. But I'm the one who's supposed to be serving you. If I'm the leader, I'm the servant. I'm the one that make the sacrifices for you. Not you for me. I have mm -hmm. to make them for myself and I have to make them for you. Right. That's the office of the priest. Right. And all the other priesthood members had off, uh, services of the temple day and night, all around the clock, serving Yahweh. You know, there's an interesting point in what you were saying, and that is uh, to do that sometimes. I know you've experienced it. I experience it all the time. Um, sometimes you feel like you're being told by the Ruach to sacrifice something for somebody else. Let's just put it that way, mm -hmm. right? The first thing that's going to happen is the carnal mind is going to come in and say, hold on now, hold on. This is all you got. Yeah, but this person is suffering more than I am, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of okay. Mm -hmm. But I believe if you, if you extend this to a higher level of rationalization in the spirit, I believe if I give it up and give it to that person, like you're telling me, you're going to not only replace it, you're going to give me more. Right. And I experience that all the time. And sometimes, I mean, all the time, mm -hmm. almost like on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes sit back and I say, how in the world or where is this, say, money coming from? I mean, I know where it's coming from. But it's the human part of my mind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't comprehend. You just gave away this. Mm -hmm. That was all you had at that moment. But the next week, not only do I got it back, I got more. Mm -hmm. So I give more. Mm -hmm. And it increases more. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I've always known the principle because I've always practiced it. But I guess because I'm practicing it at a much higher level now, than ever before. And and I have to say that my wife will tell you, I rarely spend any money on myself. I spend it on helping other people mm -hmm. that are in need. Mm -hmm. You know, I could go buy myself a brand new car. Mm -hmm. You know, I could go indulge in some hobbies or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, once in a while I indulge in some or I see a shirt that I really like. But for the most part, it doesn't move me. Mm -hmm. What moves me is removing a burden from somebody else mm -hmm. who's in a position that I was in in my younger years mm -hmm. that I had no resources to get out of that mm -hmm. and but nobody really to help me. Mm -hmm. So that's where my joy comes from. Yes. You know? Yes. And, uh, and I see the workings of it because mm -hmm. Yahweh's telling me, you know, do this, mm -hmm. sacrifice it. And then the next week, the money is back and mm -hmm. then some. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't have any question that it works mm -hmm. for me in my, in my way. So in Hebrews, getting back to this understanding of your calling, Hebrews 3.1, it says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, that is an invitation. 
Consider, observe in its fullness the apostle, ambassador of the gospel with miraculous powers, and high priest of our confession, the covenant knowledge of Hash Hamashiach Yahshua. Mm -hmm. The covenant knowledge. Mm -hmm. What is that covenant knowledge? Mm -hmm. It's a marriage contract. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be a student of the marriage contract. As the bride, as the woman mm -hmm. who's um, betrothed to him, it's your job and responsibility to know what is in those writings mm -hmm. that he expects me to be mm -hmm. if he's going to marry me. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know that, you're an ignorant wife to be mm -hmm. or bride to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, if that's your choosing, that's your choosing. Yes. But you're rolling the dice. Because you might get in, you might not get in. And if you do get in, you have to pay a heavy price at the last minute to do some major repenting to know what is required of you, which you were told before, but you refuse to do. Mm -hmm. I see that in women all the time, you know, fighting with their husbands and wanting to control their husbands and stuff like that. That ain't going to work. That man going to be gone eventually. Yeah. You playing a game. Then mm -hmm. you're going to be crying, where did my man go? Well, you drove him out of the house mm -hmm. because you want to wear the pants in the family. Mm -hmm. And I understand that a lot of women are traumatized, you know, by men and they don't freely want to give it over so easy. I understand that. I'm not trying to wash that away. That's a process. But, you know, at the end of the day, as that woman, you have to trust in Messiah that if you do your bargain, according to what the contract says, he'll change your husband's attitude. Mm -hmm. When your when Yahshua is convinced, your husband will be convinced. And when your husband's convinced, you'll be convinced that he's convinced of you. Mm -hmm. It don't work the other way around. That's not the order. Okay, so one of the points that Shaul is trying to make, belief in him causes power to work in our lives because of his power. Bingo, that's what I just said. Right. You got to trust. Stop looking at the flesh of somebody else. Mm -hmm. This is about your relationship with him and what he can bring you to from where you're at. Part of the natural. Yeah. Okay, another point that he's trying to make is that that same power is the one that raised Joshua from the dead. Mm -hmm. well, if you can raise him from the dead, how can he not change your husband? Right. Just do your part. Mm -hmm. That's all. Another point he's trying to make is he exalted him above all other powers because he fulfilled his marital contract. Mm -hmm. You know, he fulfilled the Torah. He, he can't not fulfill the Torah because he is the Torah. It, it, and all other powers, which we said principalities is one, one word they use. But we know from reading the scriptures even when you go back to Egypt, you saw other powers. But the power that Moses had in speaking his word, even just throwing the staff down in the water, was far greater than the power that they had. Right. So it's powers in this world. Um, witchcraft, sorcery, mm -hmm. lying, all of it is deceiving powers. Mm -hmm. But the power that he gives us is far above than that. He raises up a, above that, that that stuff has no effect on us once we believe and trust him. Right. So in Psalms 110, verse 4, it says, Yahweh has sworn as a repeating declaration, a repeating declaration. Mm -hmm. That's what the word sworn means in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And will not relent or be sorry. You are, a, this is a quote, you are a priest, a Cohen as a chief, Chief priest, mm -hmm. it's a high level now, right. Kohen Haggadah, forever, mm -hmm. time out of mind, according to the order of Melchizedek, the king of the right, because mm -hmm. he sits at the right hand mm -hmm. of Yahweh. It's funny, mm -hmm. I've been looking at some different videos about who is Melchizedek. The legal argument for this is so simple, and mm -hmm. yet people want to believe it's something else. Mm -hmm. And they go into all kinds of other secular writings and stuff, which are not authoritarian according to Scripture. And they come up with these other ideas mm -hmm. about who is Melchizedek. Uh, verse 5, Yahweh, the lesser, is at your right 
as the stronger hand. The right mm -hmm. hand is the stronger hand. In Hebrew, the right hand is the stronger hand. Um, he, the lesser Yahweh, shall execute kings in the days of his wrath, breathing passion through his nostrils. Isn't that what Melchizedek did mm -hmm. with Abraham? Mm -hmm. The Valley of the Kings destroyed all those kings? There's another clue right there. Mm -hmm. Here's another point that Yahshua Shaul was trying to get across in those verses. It is through his power that Messiah gained authority over the called out ones, mm -hmm. which is the, the church. Right. And so the reason why is because she freely gives of her heart to him. Without resistance. See, see, see that that's the thing. A, a husband can't have power over a of a wife unless she freely gives her will over to him mm -hmm. to do what he's supposed to do, which mm -hmm. is to love her, protect her, take care of her, and all that stuff. But a woman has to freely volunteer to do that for him to truly have that kind of power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're subservient, in other words. Mm -hmm. See. Uh, the deception, John, that really, uh, and it's so, oh, it's so um, clever how it's done when they use the word church. See, we when we see church, even today in Judaism, when they hear the word church, they think about the Gentiles. Yeah, That's exactly. the church. Uh -huh. right. But the first church came out of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It just means called out yeah, once. Called out. It's but not a they building. Were the first. Yeah. But they are putting this name on them like they are the true called out ones today. But we're we're over here still uh using the word temple or uh, synagogue as though we're keeping the commandments. A lot of us when we're actually breaking it, and the heathen can see you not keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. Right. They can see you're not fulfilling them. And you're a hypocrite right. in their eyes. Right. And so. so there's no there's no incentive for them to come because you're denying the I name. Would. Yeah. Can't blame them. You're even denying the name that they're even using to say that they replace you. You're right. denying that very name and he's coming to you and say, I came to my own and my own received me not. So it don't surprise me today that they're still rejecting him, but it's designed that so much, but it's also showing me that not every Israelite or Jew, whatever they want to call themselves, that they rejected him because Everyone that's writing these scriptures that we're reading today is a Jew. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul said he was of the tribe of Benjamin. But Peter them was right there in Jerusalem when it came, so they might be of Judah. Mm -hmm. So, but those are our teachers. There's no other teaching came. No. And so we're being deceived today, like this thing called church. Is something of Yahweh or something of God, as they might say. No, it's not. You're being called out, but you're 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 being deceived as to the reason you're being called out. You're called out to become one with the house of Israel, that you will be fellow citizens and fellow heirs, as was in Messiah. Right. And so when you go into that. Um, city, mm -hmm. what do you see? What you see is um, you see Yahshua's throne mm -hmm. sitting on a foundation. Foundation is the 12 apostles and he is the chief cornerstone. Uh -huh. So he's sitting on the throne as Melchizedek himself. Mm -hmm. He came to the earth as the chief cornerstone as Melchizedek in the flesh to teach the apostles how to be Melchizedekian priest. Mm -hmm. And they became the 12 foundation stones of the floor of this city, right? And then they, through their teachings, like you're saying, teaching us end time Melchizedekian, how to be Melchizedekian priest, or the 144,000, and we become the walls of that city that sits on that foundation. Mm -hmm. It's a perpetual ministry. It's a perpetual priesthood. 
forever. Mm -hmm. It's meant to come from no beginning, mm -hmm. and it's meant to have no end. Mm -hmm. So, um, Psalm 110. Here we go. Verse 3. Your people shall be volunteers mm -hmm. in spontaneity. Mm -hmm. Volunteers in spontaneity in the day of your power, mm -hmm. in the beauties of holiness, of glorious splendor, from the womb of the morning, mm -hmm. you have the dew that covers of your youth. Mm -hmm. See, that's how I believe that we're basically talking about. Right now, we're in the womb and we're being nourished, mm -hmm. but we're also in a kind of birthing process where we're coming to a greater level of understanding and 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 to revealing in the world. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I believe this is trying to get across. Shaul also says, or he's trying to get across, his position fills us as his body on earth to the full uh, for all of us. Mm -hmm. So his, his, what he's doing is to bring us to a fullness, right. in other words. Right. Okay, it's a process. In 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, but you are a chosen as a selected favorite generation, a royal kingly, in Greek it's kingly, mm -hmm. priesthood mm -hmm. of a sacerdotal fraternal order, mm -hmm. a holy nation that is non-Jewish, mm -hmm. his own special Purchase people that you may proclaim the praises of valor of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. So that concludes um, chapter one. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of went through a lot. My, my hope was that we could kind of try to simplify it for the average person in the faith that it what might be not only understandable, but palatable, mm -hmm. where you can understand what the book of Ephesians is trying to get across. Mm -hmm. And it starts off from the beginning, acknowledging who you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What mm -hmm. are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to become? Mm -hmm. And I hope that we were able to demonstrate by breaking down these verses systematically mm -hmm. and picking them apart to show the spiritual principles that um, support what Shaul is saying in those verses. In other words, what those verses mean, this is what he's saying by the scriptures that we provided in conjunction with what he has written in chapter 1. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm just hoping that people get it. There's going to be a lot more to reveal as we go through two, three, four, five, and six. And um, when we get there, we get there. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get another one done. Mm -hmm. And we'll just keep going through this until uh, we complete the whole thing. And we'll just wait and see what the Spirit reveals through the other chapters. Mm -hmm. So with that said, whatever it is you want to say. Well, I'd just like to praise Him. And, and my hope is that we... we we keep our minds focused on this foundation that's being laid uh, as being sons. Uh, as a parent, uh, we are the priests of the house, so we serve. We serve our, our children. It's not like we see in the days when you just tell your children to go get this and serve me. We're always looking out to serve them and to protect them and to teach them and to guide them to grow up that they're going to eventually step into this position and be servants right. themselves. They don't know it yet. And so but, this yeah. is the concept what Yahweh has did through his son. Now his son is the head and he's the head serving us and keeping us and teaching us how to come to a higher calling. This is the foundation. It's only done through obedience by love. And so my hope is that we begin to gleam. That's what it's doing for me. It's really showing me, you know, how to come up to, into the calling, to walk into the calling. That's a higher calling. That's to learn how to serve. Don't sit back and be icing your shoe to serve me all the time. Mm -hmm. He's teaching me how to be a servant, you know. And so, so um, it's my time to start serving.
and I need to learn how to be that servant. But if I'm a disobedient servant, I'll never get to that place. And so my, my prayer and hope is that it's many more that hear our voice that begin to strive for the right way, you know, to look and seek after the right way. That's the way that we're going to find the good shepherd waiting there to lead us on and keep leading us on through this, um, as David uh, wrote, Valley of the Shadows of Death. Mm. So I praise him and I exalt his name and I glorify his name and I just continue to just pray his strength in me that whenever he called me, I'll be ready. Amen. Well said. And uh, we hope this was a blessing to those out there that are watching this. And um, we appreciate any feedback if you want to give feedback. Um, and we just pray that this, this message has been a blessing to them yes. out there that at least starts to open up some eyes yes. because at some point it's got to start happening. Yes. Um, it's clear to me that the sons of disobedience are, are in the process of rising up. Yes. And the opposition is getting greater and greater yes. and the disturbances around the world and so forth. So I think this is really needed. Um, but at the end of the day, it's Yahweh's work. Yes. He will call who he's going to call. Yes. And all we can do is be faithful servants to put the word out and let it be what it be. <laughs> yes. And so for that, we just want to thank you for joining us here today and look forward to the next one on chapter two of the Book of Ephesians series. Thanks again for, uh, for watching us and shalom and peace to you.